Hello there and welcome to this week's casual educational video. We have the Buffett indicator, an indicator that Warren Buffett refers to as probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. Now, we all know that Warren Buffett is undoubtedly one of the greatest capital allocators out there and a very wise person. So I decided to dedicate an entire video to take a look at this indicator to understand mainly the logic behind it how it is being calculated, how it can be used, as well as the challenges that are around it. So let's get started. First of all, what is this indicator? It is a very simple one. It takes two parameters into account. The market cap of all the companies that are, of course, public and in a certain country and the GDP or the value of all the goods and services produced over a period of time of that same country. Now, the best way to understand this is to go into the extremes. And what I mean by that is, let's assume that we have a country where all the companies out there are public. What the market cap would represent would be the price that one should pay to buy all of the companies that exist within that country. Now, what we have by GDP is basically the value of all the goods and services or basically the entire revenue that all of these companies um, generate consolidated. And if that is the case, and this country operates uh, in isolation, so there's no trade with any other country, then this indicator would be a very useful one. And as mentioned here, it would be used to assess how expensive or cheap the aggregate stock market is at any given point in time, as you have this reference point, how cheap or expensive it was a year ago, two, five, ten again, relating the price to the GDP or the value of the goods and services being produced. Of course, in reality, that is, that is not how it is. There are, these assumption, assumptions do not hold. So what we have is, and maybe I can start with the, with the formula that uh, how it can be applied within the US. We have the Buffett indicator calculated using the Wilshire 5000 index. That is a market cap weighted index of the market value of the American stocks traded in the US. And it includes a majority of the common stocks as well as the real estate investment trusts. So by using this Wilshire 5000 index, we capture a significant portion of the public companies. Of course, here it's mentioned the, the it is majority of the common stocks, so it wouldn't be all. But of course, we don't capture the private ones as well. So if we do that, basically we get to something like this. You can see the traje trajectory. Um, it seems that there's some upward trend and we need to address that as well. So why is this ratio increasing over time? There are three, I would say, arguments that we can discuss. The first one is there are more public companies, hence the, the market cap naturally should increase more than or more uh, faster than the GDP. Now that is an argument that is not the best one that, that explains this move upward. The second one is international sales impact the market value, but not the GDP. And this is a very strong argument. If you take a look at Amazon, of course, a significant portion of the revenue that it earns comes within the US. But what about the revenue that is earned outside of the US? It's not part of the US GDP, but it is part of Amazon's market cap as it is part of the value of the company. So we have a discrepancy between the, where the value is being uh, when, it, when it comes to the market cap and where the goods and services are being produced. And number three, technological advances combined with increased productivity, increased profits. This is a very strong argument as well, because hypothetically, let's imagine that there is a company that produces, uh, manufactures chairs, something that's simple. In, in the very beginning, of course, we have a ratio between uh, the market price of, of the company and the products that it manufactures. But over time, if it figures out a way to manufacture the chairs more efficiently, more effectively, and have higher profit margins on that, the output would still be the same. The, the chairs would still be the same, but there will be a lot more profit left for the company. And of course, through the valuation, the price, the market cap would go up and therefore this ratio would also increase. So as such, there is a natural tendency that over time, this ratio increases. Again, speaking purely in this case for the US. Now, as you can see over time, um, this is of course the representation of the Buffett indicator. Back in the 1950s, the normalized line, which is these, 
these dots that you see in the middle was somewhere around 45 percent so the market cap of all the public companies in the us measured through the wilshire 5000 index um represents 45 percent or compared to the gdp was 45 percent on the other side today in 2022 the normalized is somewhere around 120 percent the actual where the market is actually at the moment is 166 so that is much higher than where one should expect for the companies on average or altogether to be fairly valued that doesn't mean that every company out there is overvalued of course there's some that are some that are not as as always but then the question is how can we use this indicator to to make or how can i personally use because this is not supposed to be a, an investment or financial advice just how i look at it um, and that is it, there there is it's quite clear that there is extended period of time where the indicator is for example one standard deviation above what is considered normal right so for example if we take a look at the 1955 somewhere from here until 1970 basically if you were looking at this and if your threshold is one standard deviation you would have made the conclusion that it has been expensive for 10 15 years now being out of the market for that that period of time is of course you would have lost um now, you would not have made any return when it comes to the stock market. Same goes between the 1970s and 1990s. It's quite clear that, again, the, the Buffett indicator can remain at some point for an extended period of time. Same goes now in the, say, from 2015 16 until, until, until today. It is one standard deviation above what one should consider normal or more historical trend line. But we know that over time it will go up so it's this is also an approximation but what that means is if you decide to calculate this yourself for any country other than the us of course the process would be the same right you have to find some index that represents the aggregate market cap and then you have to find data regarding the gdp now the gdp one is of course fairly i would say easily accessible but then you need to understand that you have to calculate this for a very extended period of time. Because if you take five years, well, that's that's not enough. You cannot really make a good call based on that. And it is a relative index. Because if we go back to the example for the US, if you only had the data between 1960 and 1970, basically that would have been the normal line. You couldn't make a conclusion that it is expensive, even though it was historically expensive. So having only a decade is not enough to, to make a conclusion of where the stock market is. Now, the second part is that I would like to address is that the percentage or this ratio, there is, there is no percentage that can be used as a benchmark. As you can see, it also fluctuates over time. It's not fixed. And if you take a look at different country, you'll have completely different percentages. And I will link, maybe, maybe I'll, I won't share it in this video, but I'll put it in the description. There are a couple of websites that um, offer or have this Buffett indicator already calculated, not only for the US, but also for a couple of other countries. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look. Um, again, it will be in the description. So I don't want to make this video too long. Now, the main criticism is that interest rates are not taken into account. And this is definitely a fair criticism. Um, if you take a look at this blue line, it represents the Buffett indicator as percentage of the historical average. So zero means basically um, within the average. And then if it's above or below, it's either it's expensive or, or cheap. And you will notice that, for example, in the year 2000 with the dot-com bubble, it was very very high much more than what it normally is and we had a similar case now in 2020 but even though it looks the same through the indicator we need to take into account the inflation back in 2000 the 10-year treasury bond was a little bit above six percent while in 2020 it was uh, at some point it was zero one two percent so we need to take that into account but how it can be used and i'll go back again to the chart for the us it is quite clear that when it reaches the two standard deviation, basically that represents if it was over 95% of, of the data points, it means that it cannot stay there for an extended period of time. There will be a correction at some point. 
um, it, it can stay there for maybe for a, for a couple of months, a year or two, but it cannot be there. If it, the data is here quite clear that even if we go back into the 1960s and 70s, it is quite clear that there has been a couple of corrections once this level of two standard deviations has been reached. But it isn't that it isn't that simple. Um, for example, if we take a look at Aramco, this is a company that became public, I believe, end of 2019. And if you take a look at the market cap, 7.3 trillion Saudi real. This is a significant amount that has been added to the market cap. Now, we know that the Buffett indicator, one of the elements is the market cap. And that is roughly 2 trillion US dollars. So if you have this um, particular example, if you're looking into Saudi Arabia and you suddenly, um, it, basically, if you're looking at 2017, 18, 2019, 2020, 2021, at some point there becomes a huge jump because of this event, which is, of course, it makes sense. But you cannot make a conclusion that suddenly the stock market became more expensive because that's not the case. So it is important to mention that this indicator can be useful, but when used for countries where certain events can have big impact, you need to be careful. And also it is probably not wise to use um, in countries where the public companies produce a small percentage of the GDP. So if all the public companies make 5% of the GDP, it might not be the, the most useful ratio. So there is some logic to it. Um, it can be used, but it's not one that uh, should be used in isolation. There should be um, other financial information looked into in parallel, one of them being, for example, the interest rates. But that would be all regarding this video. If you have any questions or comments, please do let me know. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.